Welcome to an unboxing and first look that is more exciting due to what it represents in the future than it is necessarily for its practicality today for gamers. This is the Magma Express Box 3T. This is quite simply a Thunderbolt external enclosure that has two PCIe 8X and one PCIe 4X slots inside of it. It has a 250 watt power supply and it is capable of installing pretty much anything that you would normally install in a PCI Express slot inside your computer. So right now, driver support is a bit of a challenge. It comes with a carrying case, so you can take it around with you on the road. Think of this guys, laptops that you can install up to three full-size PCI Express expansion cards in, essentially, okay? Just mind blown, right? Okay, so uh, it comes with a blower that you can install if you have something like a Quadro graphics card that you want to use to accelerate CUDA applications, although right now you can't use it as a display output yet, and that's mostly supported on, on Apple at the time, or at this time. Uh, here is a quick start guide. I've actually already opened this and I've already tinkered with it a fair bit. So that's why there's like PCI slot covers in here because I've already installed cards in it. But, <clears throat> right. So what makes it more useful in the future than it is today? Because for general consumers, you're gonna find that hardware compatibility is a bit of a challenge with not just this one, but with all of the Thunderbolt PCI Express expansion uh, expansion bays that you can obtain. So here it is. It's crafted out. It's very beautiful. I mean, it's very Apple-esque the way that it's constructed. It's got a nice matte aluminum finish over the whole thing with a simple Magma logo on both sides. It's got a perforated front to the enclosure that has a power indicator. It's a button, but generally speaking, you won't even use it because it's automatically activated as soon as a Thunderbolt connection is detected and the computer is booted up. So you can just leave it plugged in and leave it on all the time and it'll automatically turn itself on and off with your computer should you desire that. There's also a cooling fan behind here. It's an 80 mil cooling fan, so you can install power hungry things like graphics cards to go along with that 250 watt power supply. The bottom again is quite simple. You've just got four rubber feet so that it doesn't go anywhere. And once you load this thing up with expensive hardware, you're gonna want it to not really go anywhere. So I've got three cards in here right now. One of them is an Asus Zonar uh, 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 Zents. It's a Zents sound card. So this is for the, uh, the split out for more analog connectors. I've also got a Blackmagic capture card. That's an HDMI capture card. It's an Intensity Pro. And last but not least, I have some random LSI RAID card that I decided to throw in here and see what happened. I tried a number of graphics cards. It looks like the challenge right now is that the graphics card manufacturers need to release drivers that will support running over Thunderbolt. So that Thunderbolt connection is 10 gigabit per second and you can daisy chain this device for multiple express boxes or storage devices or whatever else. Remember Thunderbolt daisy chains up to six times. Um, and that gives you enough bandwidth. These are all PCIe 2.0 ports. So it has, there you go, two 8X slots and a 4X slot with one of those 8X slots having an open back so you can install a 16X card. So I tried a bunch of different graphics cards, GeForce cards, Radeon cards. Uh, I even had a Quadro 6000 that I put in, but unfortunately on the Windows platform, I wasn't able to leverage that. But out of the cards that are in here, the Blackmagic Intensity Pro worked flawlessly. So if you wanted to say, for example, have a portable capture station, so you had like a nice powerful Ivy Bridge laptop with a Thunderbolt port, and you wanted to carry one of these guys around with you with, a, I mean, it wouldn't consume much power in that configuration. So you have a small UPS or something, battery backup that you run it off of. You could actually do multiple camera captures all at the same time, do live to tape recording on set somewhere. So that's fascinating. You could install three of those cards, capture up to three sources at the same time. Very cool stuff. Power is provided by two Molex connectors, so you could adapt those to PCI Express. If you were running a Mac, which apparently runs completely driverless, you just throw the Quadro 6000 in there, you plug in the power, so you use a PCIe adapter and you install it right there. Um, so you get two of those and a 250 watt power supply, as I mentioned before. The RAID card didn't really get detected, and the Zonar Zents works. It works, but the ASUS control panel wouldn't install. So what I've encountered is everything from stuff that doesn't get detected at all, to stuff that detects and works perfectly, like the Blackmagic, I even captured video, to stuff that works, 
but doesn't quite work. So we're almost there. This is extremely exciting technology because what I am waiting for, because I like notebooks, I like portability, but I hate how gutless notebook graphics are and how horrible, generally speaking, notebook onboard sound is, how limited the expansion options are. Now all of a sudden, through the magic of Thunderbolt, you could just sit down at your desk at home, plug in your notebook, one cable, hot pluggable, have a graphics card, a beast sound card, and like an awesome external raid, like raid card that runs off to like some storage array or something like that. And the whole thing could run off your notebook, you disconnect it, you go on the road and you're ready to go. So thank you for checking out my unboxing and first look at the Magma Expressbox 3T. I am so excited for the future of devices like this. Right now they're also quite expensive. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.